gets if it gets messy, let me know. Yeah. What it is, you know. Well, we'll it'll, you know, whatever. People will be they'll they'll, they'll live. We'll be a, we'll do a part two. Anytime we miss something, we'll just do a tart part two, a yeah. tart two, or a tart poo. Yeah, a tart poo. <laughs> Time for a tart poo. <laughs> Mmm, that's the tartiest poo I've ever had. Ain't, I ain't, can taste it. Ain't nobody want a tart, really a tart poo. That just makes your butt pucker. You don't want that? <laughs> oh, uh, you butt pucker. Right, oh, you butt see. pucker. Let's see. What do we got here? We got this. Okay, here we go. Here it comes. We're recording. Yeah, that that worked. And uh, we're working on the Zoom there. Okay, we're good. And then we got this. Okay, we're good. Here we go in three, two, one. Sixteen bit arcade graphics. The 30th anniversary Genesis does. Sixteen bit action. The 30th anniversary Genesis does. 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 Genesis does. Get Golden Axe, Shinobi Three, Fantasy Star Four, Streets of Rage Two, Shining Force, and many more. Only with the Genesis Mini. Thirty years young. Pre-order a 16 bit Genesis Mini now and get 40 legendary games plus two bonus games. Genesis does. Whatever, Sulu. <laughs> uh, okay, everybody, welcome to Play Retro. I'm Scott Johnson, your host, and all my mini consoles do wheelies because the cables weigh more than they do. Oh, that's the truth. And I'm your other host, Brian Dunaway, and I think I may be giants. How else could this NES console look so classic and yet so many? Mm. Meh, it's probably just a fad. Probably. Mm. It'll end before you know it. It'll end before you know it. 2016 to 2022, it's over. It's over, baby. The grave's blown up. Don't stress. Uh, we got plenty to talk about here. Hey, uh, it's going to be great because we're talking about mini consoles today. We're talking about the retro consoles that everybody is buying now. These little classics and minis and Plastics. remasters. And they're all like the size of, of nothing. Like a little half the, you know, like a quarter of the size of what the originals were. And it's all digital and you plug it into an HDMI cable and boom, you're there. But maybe you don't know. Which ones are the best ones? Which ones should I get? Which ones are on the horizon? I don't know. Which you're one can I to, afford? Yeah, you're going to have to sit around and listen. <laughs> or which ones are discontinued stupidly? That's another yeah. thing we're going to talk about. Anyway, that's all coming up on today's show. Before we get going, though, a couple things. Because of this damn show, <laughs> I, played damn a, show. I, I played Dirty a ton show. of Pac-Man this week. A ton of Pac-Man. And oh. learned a couple things during the week. So playing Museum Collection 2 or whatever. Plus, whatever it is. Plus, there you go. Plus, why Keep can't we two. name things reasonably now? It's, What's wrong with us? It's stupid. Why can't it just be two? Because we already had a right. one, and the one was not well received, and now we have two. Anyway, two plus. Uh, the two plus two equals uh, this. I played a bunch of Pac Man, and I unlocked all the games in there. And some of them are a little annoying. It's like play two games of Mania to unlock arrangement, and then to do pack attack three times so that you can unlock yeah, pack yeah. and pals or whatever so you have all these things you know these hoops you got to jump through um i played it all on the xbox because i was trying to see how the latency issues were going um because there was a lot of complaints that there were latency issues on that version of the game right and yes. uh i didn't notice it except in pack attack pack attack seems to be really delayed everything else seemed fine hmm. So don't I don't know what's going on there. It's really weird. Don't don't have a pack attack, Scott. I mean, it's just a video game. It's just a video game. Don't have an attack of packs. I agree. Right. Uh, so I played a ton of that, and um, I have two things to say about it. Number one, the version. So there's two versions of Pac-Man arrangement in that set. Oh uh, wait, it, what? There, yeah, there is. Yeah, this is this was a surprise to me. So they only list it oh. once, but there's two of them in there. One is the arcade machine. Right. And one is the console version that is specifically the PSP version of the game. Oh, so that's right. That's the one you love. That's the one I like. Yeah. So it's widescreen, super sharp graphics. Yeah. It's good. It's really good. Now, they're both essentially the same game. Um, a little bit different, though, because the, the other one's vertical. The arcade one's kind of vertical. And even the GBA version of that game was vertical, but it scrolled. Uh, the PSP version or the widescreen version, which is the console version included in the Plus collection, is widescreen, and they they they've changed some of the layouts of levels to be wide, and have more okay. going on on the sides than they do on the top or the bottom. So I don't know. I don't yeah. know. You're, arcade you're, you're, arcade you're, arcade modes or arcade screens are three by four, right? Standard, and then four by three is your typical TV. Yeah, and in, you and look, your US. mileage may vary. You may be like, right? Oh, this is. You know, I prefer the long or I prefer the tall, but they're both there and in their full former glory, whatever that glory is. 
Scott um, likes it long. The GBA ver- version is not there, but that's okay. I emulate that one and owned it owned it on a cartridge somewhere. It's a oh. great game. Love that game. And it, it probably is still my favorite. There's something about it. Maybe it's just because that's the one I played first. But anyway, I got all those unlocked. That's the that's not even the important part. Got all this done. And then I went, all right, what do I want to do? Do I want to sit around and have Pac-Man build out his arcade and put more machines and flowers and shit all over the screen? Should I do this? And then I went, how about instead I hunker down on the couch and barely move and play nonstop Pac-Man Championship Edition 2, oh. which is not included in the collection. It's on its own. Oh, that's crap. Yeah, I know. I don't know why it's not in there. should be. It's newer though, so people are probably it's like 2018. It's not considered a okay, right, right, right. A classic. Whereas Championship One came out in like 2012, so I get it. Anyway, uh, I I don't know how people feel about two these days, but man, I think that game is freaking rad. It's so good, and I am just happy to be playing that. So, whole bunch of Pac Man in my life. Oh, by the way, I could not. Could, I could not stop playing fast enough that weird Japanese import that we never got here. Um, Pac-Man that Adventure. 256 one or the... Uh... No, the, the 256 is great. Uh, yeah. It's Adventure. Or it's the one with the side-scrolling SNES Japanese Oh, oh the SNES one that was also... Uh, yeah, yeah. That was... Uh, oh, it's, uh, Adventure. Uh, pack, uh, adv- oh, time, pack adventure. and Time. Pa- yeah, no, it's Adventure. Pa- Isn't it just Adventure? Is it now? Is that? I thought it was packing time. Well, now we got to take a look again. I don't freaking remember how short our memories are. At, uh, Not the uh, scrolling one where you where you shoot uh, slingshots at stuff to activate them. Not, that, no, not no, that. that's that's. You're right. You're right. That would be the ah crap. There's too many Pac-Men. And they're all eating my soul. No, this that's not that's packing time. That's isn't that right? Isn't maybe the I don't one think it was so. based on? Uh, you don't do any time travel in it. Oh, okay. Well, maybe not then. I don't know, dude. What do I know? I don't know anything. <laughs> the important thing is, though, uh, play the hell out of Pac-Man well, what, and have yeah, a great time. Yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was based on another game. What what was it now? Now I'm forgetting. Oh, my God. See, this is just like in school. Mm-hmm. I learned all my homework for the week. Yep. And, and then by the, the next week, week yep. it was like, what did we talk about again? Oh, here <laughs> it is. It's a uh, pac uh, Oh. Where is this? Miss Pac-Man. I thought it was I I'm almost positive it's Pac in time, right? Is it Super it's not it's Pac-Land? Not super Pac-Man. It's not Pac-Land. It's not I'm telling you it's, it's Pac in time. It's got to be. You know what? It might be. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, let me just let me double check I'm thinking of the right thing here. Oh yeah, this is it. Pac in time. Yeah, yeah that game is, that game's not great. It looks neat. It's, yeah, yeah it play it, great. It's, it's, I'm with you. I played the first like uh, uh, 10 minutes of it, and I was like, yeah, I want to play more of this. And then I went back, and I think I played for about 20 minutes, and I'm like, yeah, I don't want to play much more of this. It's, uh, it's underbaked. It's neat and all. It's just, it's just not done, or it's it's too bouncy yeah, and random, and Fury, I don't know. It's chaos. It's, uh, it's, it's made from uh, – it, it's, it's based on another game called Fury of the – Furries, and we talked about that last right. That's why. Right. That's yeah. Right. Now it's all coming back all. to me now. Okay, so I guess he does go back in time. Good, good for him. Yeah, we we don't go that far. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna get to that story point. He's a poo poo. <laughs> he's a poo poo head. Um, he anyway. has a hook. What did you call it? You had so much trouble with it. I couldn't it. think of it. It's a, it's a, it's a grapple. It's a, it's a grappling grapple. hook. But I called it about twenty other things before settling yeah. a grappling hook because I'm an idiot. <laughs> anyway. I'm glad you went back and played some more uh, Pac Man because I I. I, I left Pac-Man last week, and I did not look back, not even once. Oh, wow. I put my Pac-Man stuff up after the show and didn't look back again. Shame on me. You had your you had your fill. I had my... I had my fill. I didn't have my fill. I had uh, I was hungry still, so I kept playing. It's really good. And I'm not done with Championship 2. I'm really enjoying it. It's really good. So I'm going to keep... You know, I say that, that, but I do think after the show, I did play some more arrangement. and uh, But then I packed it up. Yeah. Then I packed it up. I gave yeah. it a PAC'd it up. I get it. I see what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah, pac yeah, yeah. Get up. Also, arrangement is always playable and always good. So those are the two I will probably. <laughs> Here's what's hilarious: I probably got well. It's Game Pass, so who cares? But I ended up getting the Plus Collection so that I can play Arrangement, <laughs> and then I will get out of that collection to play Championship Two because those are the two best games right now, in my yeah. opinion. I know everybody's got their opinions. No, Miss Pac-Man, nowhere near any of this. I'll play that on another emulator, whatever. But yeah, uh, it's a good sign that that thing's doing okay. All right, uh, yeah. you picked up a, a dirty old PS3 this week. What, what's that about? Why you, that's oh. not even retro? What is that thing? What is it? So let's talk about this week's retro pickups, including 
not necessarily extremely retro, but it's got some retro feels to it because they the PS3 does play the PS2, which is almost retro. So it's not too many. Oh options wait, away, only the first only the first production run did. Is oh, you're right. The, I that... thought, the, but the first. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. So did you the get that? Is that what you the, ended the up slim with? Slim PS3 oh. that I got is moddable, so that I can play oh. region free and old stuff. I'm going to do the mod on it, um, but first. I, I got off Facebook Marketplace. I met a dude what was uh, met me at Walmart, 40 bucks, no cables. That's fine. This is a standard power cable. Uh, just a little, you know, standard old plug. The power supply is in the PS3. Thank when did you. you when, that's true. When did, that's you. why it was so damn heavy. But when did you meet this guy at a Walmart? What time of day did this happen? I, it, was, it was like afternoon. It was like 5.30. It was still plenty of daylight. I don't, I don't okay. do meetups after dark. I don't okay. do that. That's okay. not me. And he didn't say, um, so I, uh, hey, uh, while you're here, I'll give you a discount if you give me a handy or something. He didn't get <laughs> one of those deals. I didn't stay long enough to find out if he was okay. going to say that. So he uh, he didn't have that, and it's just HDMI cable. So those are two things I really, really needed, and I already had some controllers, so we was all good there. So I was like, $40. He said it works. I'm like, cool. I pick it up from the guy. He's a smoker, and that's fine. It's his car. He can smoke all he wants. But immediately I was like, uh, I should have checked if it's, you know, it's probably going to smell smoky. It looked like it was kind of dirty, mm. you know, like dust and stuff in it. So I don't usually bring those things in the house. You'll You'll get bugs. So you wrote I, here oily. I, is oily an accurate description of the PS3? Oily, oily is where I'm getting to. So okay. I, I took it out in the backyard and I was like, <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna I'm gonna got my got my air compressor, just gonna spray it off. You know, yeah. Spray off a little bit. Then I it's, it's, it's like, yeah, why is it it feels oily or something? Why does it feel oily? So I popped it open. No dust really, no dust at all. Uh, but I did notice I kind of got in there and I was like, what is this? This oil this is it smells like motor oil. Why does it? Did they leave it in the back seat or something with some motor oil spilling or what something? What happened so I, there? That's foul. That's what I was curious about. So I kept digging deeper. So I was like, okay, well, uh, let me look at this. And I was like, okay, it kind of looks like it's all back here in this one corner, which is where the fan blades are blowing. And I got to looking, and I guess the fan must have been noisy or something at one point in time. And someone's at home solution was to put a little motor oil on it. Oh, so my Lord. they did that. But they put use. I guess they must use too much because you know it dripped down into the blades and the fan spins and it f- sprayed it all over in the one corner, which was not ideal. <laughs> now it, it, work? it did, did fire, you fire up. It, was up? Right. it did work. Okay, <laughs> damn dude, I'd have been afraid, dude. Like I, it was gonna catch on fire or something. That thing's all lubed exactly. up. Exactly. So I said, okay. I said, okay. On pause. I said, we're not doing anything else with PS3 until we do a complete tear down and. Wash. So I did. I, I took every. I did alcohol bath. You know, in, in the appropriate parts. I took plastic pieces apart. I broke this thing. I took this thing all the way down to to the bone. Yeah. And uh, you know, washed the plastic parts that I could and got rid of all. The That's impressive because that machine was notoriously hard to take apart back in the day. Yeah, it was. It was a lot of fun. There's a lot of screws. Uh, but so it's sitting on my on my table right now, back here. This is uh, this is what. That's what it looks like right there. There's their board. That's, That's the what PS3 I was most board. About because. What's that? That's the PS3 board. Yeah, that's the PS3 board. That's the whole thing right there. That now, looks so uh, you know, I, since I had to, since I had to dig it all the way out, I had to, you know, I had to disconnect the the fan and everything. So I had to, I had to put some new, uh, got to put some new grease on there. Got to put some new grease. Some new monkey grease. Yeah. So I'm yeah, looking so at I that. Could, I could transfer that heat off of there. That is a little bit more sparse than I would have thought. I never saw the yeah. Mo- one, most so. of it, most of it is most of the PS3 Slim is power supply and CD-ROM. Weird. Yeah. Weird. Most of it is that. Yeah, yeah. that power supply so, was heavy, but we were all glad it was there. Uh, your 360s, uh, on the other hand, had that giant brick hanging off of it. Right. Um, so that was that was weird. But all that stuff's gotten better these days. Although the consoles yeah. have gotten bigger, too. The Series X and PS5 are freaking monstrous. And, right. Uh, part of that is because they got a big power core to them, as well as a bunch of other parts. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I'd be really curious to see. Somebody's done this somewhere, but I'm sure there's like a breakdown of all these consoles. You know what I wish I would have done? Here's what What's I wish. That? Sold all my consoles like when they were old and time for a new one. That's what I often did. And I've yeah, regretted it ever since because there's yeah, stuff I would love too. to still have. But here's what I wish I would have done instead. Tear them apart and build one of those like almost like insect boards you do when you're like collecting butterflies. Oh, yeah. But you yeah. just fill it with the parts and like here's the main board. Here's the CPU. Here's the fan. Here's the guts. Here's the plastic outside. Here's the whatever. And just label it and have these cool like dioramic looking framed things i would love right. that oh my gosh oh that would Why be so that? cool man yeah hey uh ps3 release date original 
uh, 2005, same, same. Uh, late that year, because yeah. earlier yeah, that two, year. Yeah, 2000, right, 2006, close. Six. So, yeah. I, in that's, that's, oh, that's, oh, 05 in Japan, sorry. Oh, five yeah, yeah, that's pretty old, man. That's that's getting on up there. Yeah, that's uh, that's almost in play retro territory. Well, usually you count like end of life as well, right? Which was 2013. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. just wasn't that long ago. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> plus they kept making them after that. So yeah, I don't know. Right, like, yeah. I'm, but it's I, good. Oh, I don't even I don't even consider the last ones to even be uh, consoles. Those yeah. super slams with the slide door. Those are those don't even exist in my head. Yeah, it's we're in a it's a we're we're in a weird time. Although there's that I mean there's like 30 years from now someone's going to look back on the oh, Series absolutely. X PS5 and go, oh, "Man, remember those?" and maybe they'll be the last pieces of hardware we made like this. I don't know, but it's going to be a weird right. look back and we'll be dead. You and I will be dead. So Yeah, yeah. But but the story well, the moral of the story is I I I rolled the dice on the Facebook Marketplace and a PS3 I have a PS3 and it did function. It is going to be some work and I'm going to put it back together and we're going to see if we got a good PS3 and if I salvage to say something and someone from a house fire, I hope. Uh, I wouldn't think so though because it's still motor oil. I mean, I don't know how that would really, because, you know, that's that's pretty resistant to heat, right? That's the whole purpose. But motor oil, it yeah, it's okay. Con- yeah, mm-hmm. but if it, if it caused contacts, I guess, somewhere, I guess there could be a short that could make some I don't problems. think oil, I, I mean, oil and, well, crude, oil and crude form, I think, is ignitable, right. but you have to do a lot to ignite it, whereas gas, refined yeah. gas is way more like, boom, let's go, right. combustible. So I think you're probably okay. The, but the point was, I wasn't leaving that crap. <laughs> I wasn't leaving that plugged in in the house. Yeah. Uh, no, thank you. Now, on the other tip, uh, John from uh, John and SC, uh, who's a listener, uh, and his family, they they were nice enough to put a Wii U on loan with me. They live uh, fairly close to me, uh, and so we met up, and I picked it up. So thank you for uh, John and SC and family for that Wii U loan. We're gonna we're gonna nice. do some stuff. We're gonna. I have a testing. Wii U. Should I do something with my Wii U? What should I do with it? Absolutely. Oh man, yeah, you could do some. Uh, you can do some uh, soft modding. And there's this. There's some things I want to try. There's a couple of things I want to try. No, no okay. hard mod stuff, okay. but just soft mod. All right. Yeah. I um. I didn't hate that console. I liked it. I I didn't either. It didn't sell well. I actually liked it as well. But for some reason, it fell at a bad time for me. Far as gaming goes, mm. I just wasn't gaming as much at that time. I, I remember that. I remember it was a bit of a slower yeah. period for you. I, yeah, I, I yeah. Agree. But for yeah. some reason, so I had one. Nobody was playing with it, so I sold it. Regrets. Well, I have a few. You have a few. Well, we'll see what comes out of all of that. In the meantime, we have this to discuss. Shall we play a game? Brian, have you heard of retro mini consoles? Have you heard of those? I've heard of retro mini consoles as well as retro. Uh, classic consoles. And mm-hmm. I think we're going to be switching those words in and out a lot, mini and uh, classic, because that's the two uh, names they've given these things. Yeah, I. Uh, it's weird. It's weird that they haven't all... Dis- well, I don't. maybe it isn't, but it's, it's a little strange that they all just keep using different words, and it kind of depends on who, who you are. But we're talking everything from the NES Classic, the SNES Classic, the C64 Mini, PlayStation Classic, or PS1 Mini, some people call it. Sega Genesis mm-hmm. Mini, the upcoming Sega Genesis 2 Mini, or they're, right now yes. it's the Mega Drive 2 because uh, it's only in Europe at the moment. But uh, among others, there's a bunch of other stuff Atari did back in the day. Neo Geo has one out in 2017 that I hate and makes me mad. I wish they'd do a new one. <laughs> it does make me mad, too. I'm so glad to hear it. Yeah, we'll uh, talk about that. because I, I put me. it in the also list just because it pissed me off. Yeah, I want to own that <laughs> device. I really do, but I don't want it in the form it's in. It's a stupid format. Is is yeah? All these rest of these are consoles, and the they they decided to go with the arcade Neo Geo instead of the uh, what they call the, the the home console version of that. They did something else anyway. I don't know why they had to do the arcade form factor. That's dumb. It's too small. It it's me. it's just like annoying to me. And all you yeah. needed to do is make make it look like the console or the arcade yeah. cabinet. Fine, I don't care. But let me plug that into my TV and use it like normal. And you kind of can with this, but it's just not the yeah, same. Yeah. Like, give me the home, not- the home Neo Geo. Put some CD games on there from the Neo Geo CD. Put a ton of exactly. Neo Geo classics on there. I'm buying your console. I'll buy it now. I'll yeah, buy it right now. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, we'll get to all that. Uh, and you're gonna hear the this. A- go, was it the AES system or what was the Neo Geo? What was uh, the system a- um, I don't remember. The home one, we just my friend had one, and I didn't want to pay that much. It was six hundred dollars yeah. for that thing or something. Yeah. I would have preferred that format of the arcade, but maybe maybe I wasn't the right 
target audience. Anyway, yeah. I didn't feel like it really fit in with our definition of the retro mini classic consoles, yeah. which are basically any console uh, rep replica uh, that is basically one half the size of the original. This is pretty much where all the, spe all the specs are. is half the size of the original, has uh, 720p HDMI hookups, yeah. uh, and usually connects through a um, micro USB connection. Uh, and that's pretty much what most of the main ones that we're going to talk about. For power, you mean, have. right? The the Yeah, well, for yeah. the power, yeah. Sorry. Well, yeah, or the power or the hookup for the firmware upgrades and the hacks and all that kind of the stuff. Hacking. Mm, we're gonna the get... hacking. You know, we're going to talk about the hacking. We'll talk about the I hacking. Because I hacked all of them. The least, hackable, them all. the least hackable on this list, in my opinion, is that PlayStation 1. It might be easy to mm -hmm. hack, but there's just really no No, point. no, no. You, you are, um, it is the most complicated one to hack uh, just because of all the steps involved. Mm. But once you get it modified, it's actually it's pretty simple. But there's a lot of steps. It's that's how it is. All a right. lot of steps. Let's talk about Nintendo first. I feel like in a little bit of a way, in terms of the big, hot, cool thing to buy way of getting yeah. one of these and having it come directly from the pro the platform maker. Because prior to this, it was like, hey, here's a weird looking joystick that plugs into your TV and plays a bunch of old games we licensed. That was the yeah. that was about all you had up till now, and then the whole hacker freaking ROM scene, and that was it really. Um, Nintendo had their virtual console, and they had other ways to play some of their older games. Certainly, the Switch does now, but nobody was doing anything official. And I feel like oh, this this oh. opened the floodgates a little bit, don't you right. think? Um, oh, absolutely. Well, actually, I've done I've done a deep deep dive this week on just that subject because that's what I thought too. I thought that I knew the beginning of the story. I thought the beginning of the story was the NES Classic Edition. I was incorrect because I thought, okay, you know, licensed, officially licensed thing that are in a mini format. And that's when I had found this thing. I don't know if you remember this from last week. Oh, Goodwill look at that. Buy. Yeah. That Sega Genesis uh, at games uh, officially licensed, officially has 40 official licensed Sega games on here, plus 40 games nobody knows about, um, and is in a, fall, in a small form factor. And uh, it's it you know you'd find these at the checkout counters of you know Walgreens, Bath, Bath and Beyond, just about any place. And these things almost ruined the market before it even got started. And I think that's where Nintendo came in and made a course correction. Here is our story again, but in mini form, in mini form, because there's a market out there. Nintendo saw that market and said, "Hey, the price point's not bad, but every out everything out there." has quality control issues, we can make it better, just as inexpensive, and do well with it. When did that and come out? What was, the, what was the year? This was 2012. So this was two, 2012, and what a piece of crap this thing is. It doesn't have the the qualifier of what we stuck with, which is the HDMI hookups. It's just got a, a, compo a component, composite, a composite uh, video and audio to plug in and by the time we got to 2016 most of us didn't have this on our smart tvs we were used well, most of us were using uh you know just hdmi yeah we, it all converted by then i would time. argue it converted right. right before that like i don't know that seems like a they were behind uh right when they i mean still, a lot of tvs still carried it on there but it was a, it was a pain to hook up and everything else and this also has its own little you know power plug and so you can't interface with this thing at all and so the the hacking community on this first generation isn't there yeah. And so, yeah. Uh, so that was a thing. that was a piece of poo, basically. I mean, it was right. And that's at games, by the way. The people that were that make it hard to get Miss Pac Man on anything. Same people. <laughs> We've been talking a lot about this trash company. Yeah. I really have found a way to loathe these guys. <laughs> I don't like them either. They they and it's not. I don't even know. Maybe they they've actually done better in more recent years. Uh, but they almost destroyed Sega, and Sega almost let them. And, uh, but this story is going to have a happy ending, so let's we will. Can move back. All on. right, Get so back ignore, to the NES. ignore that ugly thing. Instead, back right. in uh, 2016, you could buy an NES Classic Edition, aka an NES Mini, for right. 60 bucks at launch, and uh, buy gum. That's what I did. Although, you know what? Now that I think about it, I think somebody bought mine and surprised me with it. You, I, I remember this because I got lucky, and I remember you did. You had trouble, as lots of my friends had trouble getting this. I. Um, got super lucky. These things went on pre-order, 
Um, and I was um, trying to get one on GameStop's website because that was one of the places you could do them. There's a lot of buzz. This is around holiday time, 2016. Everybody, everybody was excited about it. They really want the price point was just too freaking delicious to imagine. Mm -hmm. uh, and everybody was doing it. And I was on the website, couldn't get one. Uh, I had to leave, so I pulled up the GameStop uh, app on my phone, and uh, I couldn't find the page for it. So I did a, a search using their little search function, and it took me to a page that wasn't supposed to be indexed, and it wasn't published. <laughs> and I was able to secure a pre-order. Yeah. And uh, and they honored that pre-order. Oh wow! And uh, I was one of the lucky few that I knew that that got one well of the done. NES classics ac across the. Uh, uh, and it never worked again. I never got that system. Never worked again. But it did that one time. It worked in my favor. Well, good. Um, <laughs> I was really happy with the price point at the time. I thought that was a really good place to put that price, which is weird for Nintendo. They like to gouge you usually. And uh, I don't know. I yeah, thought it, sixty bucks it was felt good. I, I was going back and reading some articles, and uh, you remember Phil's Ame? How do you say it? How do you say it? Fizame. You know, Reggie Fizame. Phil, Phil, yeah, Phil. There you go. Reg, I always call him Reggie. I don't yeah, use this. Just Fizeme call him Reggie. That's his anyway. first name. Go ahead. Reggie's. Good. Yeah, Reggie. So, so back uh, <laughs> when this was coming out, when when they were coming out with the SNES, he went and talked. He went back and talked about uh, the release of the NES and why they didn't make more. But he told the Financial Times in an interview uh, that it made manufacturing suggested suggestions based on how poorly other retro style consoles had sold for other companies it also had to be priced at around eighty dollars or less to stay clear of the other nintendo hardware like the 2ds and 3ds so they were very apprehensive uh because of things like sega taking a chance with at games atari by name only at this point taking a chance uh, with with these small systems, and that's mm -hmm. when they saw that market there, and that's the reason why the price point was so low. And then they found out they could actually go a little bit higher, and they did with the SNES. Yeah, they could have easily gone higher, and they did. You're right. They came out with the NES yeah. or Super NES uh, Classic later, and uh, when I say later, it was only a year. I remember that was like year on year, and you could get uh, mm -hmm. almost eight months apart as all, something like that. It was pretty close. It was very um, short. 80 bucks at launch. Got one of those. Uh, also came with two controllers, slightly longer cable. Let's talk about some of the games real quick. The NES Classic had 30, is it? Hold on. Yeah, the NES Classic had, uh, I thought it was 40. It only came with one controller. There it is, 40. And yep. it was a, it only came with one controller. That's one of the reasons why it was cheaper. Uh, and that, and that, and they saved a lot of money on cables, apparently, because it was only like three foot. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was, it was tiny. Short, it was a short cable. Yeah, it sucked. People complained. Yeah. And uh, if you're not going to do yeah. it wireless, you got to give us some cable room. And they didn't yeah. do that. And then with the SNES uh, version or the SNES one the year later, that did have longer cables. Still not long enough, in my opinion, but better. No, still, better. I think there were like five foot on the Super NES, uh, but they've been, they made a lot of improvements. The NES, like I said, you could buy the uh, you could buy extension cables. I think I bought those even before my pre-order came in because I had read the reviews and I was mm -hmm. like, oh, I want to deal with that. Yeah. And I went ahead and ordered a second controller. It was official. Yeah. And uh, the one thing I didn't like about the SNES and the NES, mm. they both, they, they, and I guess this kind of, this is gimmicky, um, but you could plug in, you could plug in these controllers because the ports they have aren't USB ports no, for these controllers. They're proprietary. They, they're they're yeah. the nunchuck ports that you plug into the back of the, you know, into the Wii. Uh, it's, on the like Wii they, it's like they had a whole bunch of female and male uh, freaking nunchuck controller connectors still laying around some freaking uh, yeah. factory floor and they were like you know what we could do yeah. we'll put these in the mini and it was it's so weird it was part of and they were try, trying to tie it in with the we wear stuff they were getting ready to you know to to maybe launch a little later on but you know you were supposed to be able to plug that into your nunchuck and and use it that way and i'm like oh get out of here with yeah. this crap What's get out of here get out of my face with this crap is what i would say uh the yeah. games themselves are notable in that they're all pretty popular especially on the nes side and not a, i haven't heard too many complaints about what's there or what isn't but um, very little differences between Japan and here. In fact, we got the better deal, mm -hmm. I think. We got things like Bubble Bubble Bobble. They did not get. They didn't get Castlevania yeah. II, Simon's Quest, Donkey That's Kong crap. Jr., Final Fantasy. Although we didn't get three, they got three. So there's a bunch yeah. of like weird weird stuff missing depending on which uh, territory you're in. But They didn't get um, Kid Icarus. Yeah, they didn't. Japan not got no Kid Icarus, but we did. They got they got uh, they got open tournament golf though. Congratulations! Thank, thank goodness someone got open tournament golf. Uh, we didn't get Solomon's Key, which is actually pretty cool. But I also think right. that may have been a Japanese exclusive. And who knows? Some of these are like 
tied up in rights fights and who owns what and who can yeah, yeah. resell whatever. Who can but, distribute in what market, right? We're going to get to region locking one day, but uh, we got Punch Out and Star Tropics. Japan did not. That we got Tech Mobile. <laughs> Because yeah, we like football. Look at that. Japan, we win. Japan don't care about no American football. Why would they want that? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it's a good collection. Totally worth plugging yeah. that in and playing it. Uh, the SNES game collection is controversial. Which, um, I actually, um, it is controversial, but yeah. I will say I went through the list of these games this week and I, every single game, I was like, Yes would play, yes would play, yes would play, yes would play, all the way down through the whole thing. I think for the most your, part it's give me true. Your caveats. It's mostly true. Um, I think there's some things missing more than the things that are there. Ah, there it's also go. less games. There are only 21 yeah. built in, which is right. a lot less than 40 for the previous one. Uh, yeah, I think it was it, 30 on the first one, then uh, 21 on the first but you had to unlock Star Fox 2. Yeah, Star Fox 2, which was never released anywhere, and there's a reason why, by the way. It's not very good. Nah. <laughs> uh, but it was previously unreleased, and that that thing's there. Um, yeah. Anyway, it uh, and they by the way, that thing was near the end of its development in 96, and Nintendo had, they hadn't said anything about where it was. They were just like, yeah, we got a new Star Fox coming, and then nothing, yeah. no official word Sorry, even about guys. the cancellation, and then right. bam, here it is after all these rumors all these years later. Uh, you could play it. But anyway, there's. I just think they could have put more on here, um, and I don't oh, mean absolutely. I don't mean a video game called Moron. I mean more games more. on here. That's what I mean. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I mean you got you, know. you got like we have talked about a lot of these games. We've talked about Contra Three, The Alien Wars, Donkey Kong Country. I want to play Earthbound so bad. Uh, you know, of course, Fire. Uh, you know, Final Fantasy. Everybody knows those. Kirby Superstar uh, and Dream Course. I mean, there's just so many things. Mega Man X. I mean, I could play all these games through completion. Secret of Mana. I mean, these are all great games. No, they're all great. It's here's great here's boy. the thing, though. I, honestly, I think this console at 80 bucks is actually worth it for the these titles alone. I would get it for yeah, yeah. Super Castlevania 4. I would get it for Super Mario Kart. I think RPG is really good, too, as well. Super Mario World is one of the greatest uh, platformers of all time. And Super Metroid. Those that Even that brief list... Worth the price of admission. This thing was 80 bucks. Yeah. Totally worth it. And there's a lot more than that. You got your Donkey Kongs and your Contras and stuff we've talked about on the show a bunch of times. Kirby, uh, Kirby's Dream Court, or no, Kirby Superstar. That's the one I like. Yeah. Uh, really good Kirby game on there. Uh, st- you know, Street Fighter 2 Turbo Hyper Fighting. How do you, this is one of the greatest games, if not the greatest fighting game of all time. Uh, yeah. It's a good deal. It's a good deal. Yeah, Yoshi's this is, Island. This is the, and, oh, and- man. So good, and they did a they did a bit because they they knew this time around. This time around, now they have, now they have an idea of what's going on in this market, right? Because they've already had a little test run. They saw how the things went. You know, could they turn it around? And the answer was yes, they could turn it around. There's a couple of things I don't like about this thing, though. I don't like how this one. You know, they had the they had this fake uh, uh, door cover that <laughs> yeah. makes it look like the original. Uh, ports for the controllers which you plug in yeah. and like you said you know the cables it's not long it might be four foot it's it's, it's okay but for long. people with 20 you know 50 inch tvs who want to sit back a little it's bad yeah it's and I, I, I guess the idea is that in in 20 uh what 2017 that we all have you know really long hdmi cables so i mean you could offset everything because uh, you could put it on the couch next to you but that's not how i want this thing no. one of the one of the pleasures of the minis. And you may be thinking, why are you guys even talking about minis? Minis are stupid. Maybe you're kind of, you know, you're in the minis are stupid camp. And I would argue that it's the, it's the use case that's so important here because here is a, a device that plugs into my modern TV mm-hmm. uh, that doesn't require me to have any special adapters. I just plug the stupid thing in um, and I don't have to have my carts uh, or anything. I don't have to have no carts, no nothing, no internet connectivity, no that trash. It's just a simple, here's, here's single what people do. purpose. Here's the here's the problem. This is what people do. Shelf. People say, "How? Oh, I could do all this on a freaking uh, Raspberry, Raspberry Pi three. Pie. Do all my own things, right. or I could have you know this. Yeah, I already got this on a computer. I got more games. I got a thousand games, and they're all running great. I get it. Okay, but yeah. here we have a retailable, gettable, affordable legal way to get yes. these things and not only get them, but get them on these rad, well-made, well-replicated little console boxes so that it scratches all our little nostalgia boners. Everybody's got around these things, right? 
and all of that with, with these like legit controllers, not some third party knockoffs. Yeah. Uh, plug it into your TV it, and go like, do you, I, I, I think, I don't know how you not like that. Who doesn't like this? I know at this price point and, and not to mention, uh, it, if, have you heard the menu music for the super NES? It's or amazing. Any of these consoles. It's amazing. Do we, do we have like a, a clip of that? I didn't capture it, but um, I'll do it right okay. now, but it's really good. But all this stuff just gives me, you know, the extreme Nintendo, Nintendo. It, and look, look at this thing. I mean, it's, it's super small. It's I freaking adorable it, you know, is what it I is. I can put it on a shelf somewhere. Like when I get through playing with it, I can, I can feel proud about displaying it. That's Unlike, right. look, <laughs> I really love my original SNES. Yeah. But with all the games and all the controllers that I have with that thing, it's a freaking disaster no, to I look know. at. I know. I mean, it's not cool. I mean, these are cool. They're self. Cool. These are self-contained and rad looking. Okay, here's that menu music. Check this out. That's the store. That's which store is that? This is Super NES. Super NES. Yeah. Isn't that great? It's so good. Oh, we just can we just do this the rest of the show? This is gonna be good. Yeah, yeah. Let's just do this. Let's just do this because Nintendo knows how to make quality. <laughs> I love that. It's an amazing theme. I don't know what the menu. Let's see. What is the menu on the? It is it like the 3ds? What is? I've heard that music before somewhere else. It might be repurposed, but um, here's the classic. I, I just love it. Let's probably try this one. Or sorry, the NES one. This is that menu. Any chance for for Nintendo to make like menu music? I'm in. Yeah, I'm with it because they, they do it. this better than anybody. I will yep. tell you what they don't do very well: the pr promo videos for both. Uh, essentially, they're commercials, but the 2016 and 2017 promotional videos Nintendo put together for both of these devices to sell them right. are lame. They they <laughs> they're lame. Like they don't they say anything. Lame. It's all visual and it's a bunch of words on screen. Nobody does anything. Whereas the Sega one, what I, I played at the beginning of the show, has got awesome, ridiculous, terrible voiceover, yeah. and it's yeah. amazing. Yeah. I mean, you heard this. Hold on. Where is this part? Does. Genesis does. Genesis does. does. Yeah. Genesis does. They, yeah, Nintendo's does. always kind of been a little straight laced with that kind of stuff. Even their radical uh, the Super NES commercial we played earlier, it has an area. It, it has like radical. It says radical on it, but it's all subdued, like in this, like, like a it. badge or something. It's like here's something very straight laced, and here's a sticker. Boom. Yep. Radical. But you know what's funny um, is they were kind of doing. They're doing callbacks to the old war. They were like, we're yeah, gonna say yeah, a bunch were. of we're gonna say a and, bunch of stuff that would piss off Sega people, and the Sega people are like, we're yeah. just barely gonna say Nintendo. We're gonna say Genesis does. We're not going to say what Nintendo don't, but we want to, and you know we want to, and you can feel it. You know we want yeah. to fight. Let's fight. Yeah, that that was part of the 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 appeal, right? That so, like I said, it's <coughs> it's this whole thing, it's the story of the '80s and '90s being retold again in miniature form in in so many true ways. This all got started, uh, like you had mentioned at the top of the show. This all got started because, first of all. Technology had improved a lot over 20 years from the time we saw the you know Atari 2600, and then we started seeing those little uh, handheld. You know, we saw controllers with built-in um, games, right? Mm -hmm. And and that that made sense at the time. It's like, oh yeah, you want to make something modern and you want to sell it. You wouldn't make a whole console that would not only need to be half the size of the old console when you can just fit it all inside of a controller and sell it that way. That was. That was limited thinking. That made then, sense, right? It really did. It, it makes you were sense. Like, but all fit on here. We don't need any other room yeah. for it. You have one cable to your TV. Like I yes. get the business thinking, but they were yeah. wrong. They were. They, wrong. It did not appeal to the nostalgic right feeling. So comes here comes along uh, Atari veteran Kurt Vindel. Uh, back in 2004, he had a company called Legacy Engineering Group. He's uh, he's he's been big on preservation of Atari. Uh, and, and their whole history, and they started uh, uh, developing uh, the Atari Flashback 1 and 2. The first one ran on a NES on a chip, um, and so it's kind of a Famiclone. Uh, and then later on, they the, in the second version, it was a hardware-specific chip. It's called an Atari on a chip. Imagine that. Uh, and, and, and he worked really hard on it, and he did the first one like in 10 months. And then, somewhere along the way, at games purchased the Atari flashback series yeah. uh, from, from the legacy engineering group. Uh, and, and they moved forward with this 
and that's when it really turned into to a shit show and then t- until Nintendo showed up. Yeah. So just like the, just like echoes of the 80s, Atari comes in here. They got it, you know, they got a they got a good idea. Yeah. And then it, it just they they let it flounder and then NES has to come in and Clean, clean it all up. Yep. Clean they come up. in. They wave their Atari wiener around, and Nintendo goes, "Nope, we have a better way." <laughs> and then Sega says, uh, "We can do that too." And then all hell breaks loose again. Uh, right. Let's talk for a second about the C sixty four Mini, the Commodore sixty four, common, uh, very common computer in people's homes back in the day. Yes. And uh, as you may remember, Especially in the North America, yeah, you may remember it had a lot of game support, a lot of different games to play on that thing. And, and a long uh, life. Like oh, yeah. Long, long life. 10 years worth of gaming. Yep. 36 years later, we are now, or or so, a couple years now. I don't know. That's, that was three That was when it released, ago. yeah. So it's been 2018. It would have been 34 years then. We're almost 40 years on this thing. Anyway, mm-hmm. uh, the C64, if you were lucky to have one in your house, was rad. So they said, hey, why don't we make a little version of that? Now, that that's weird because basically the Commodore 64 was notable from a, a platform standpoint, as, as being basically a, a, a keyboard with it, well, all the computing right. in it. And Correct. so that's what they made. They made a tiny one of those. Yeah. And uh, you attach a, a, a controller to it, and you and you play 64 games built yes. into this thing. And that, and that controller is not just any controller. That controller you see there is the same controller we had seen before all the mini revolutions came about because you used to get that controller with the built-in 64 games. Right. Way back. Yeah, way back before all this even started. Yeah. Uh, and so once we're going to have a couple of people on this list uh, that don't really exist anymore, only in name. So when we talk about Atari, we're not talking about Atari. Yeah. When we're talking about the C64, we're not talking about Commodore. Yeah. We're talking about, you know, in name only, in, in preservation only. Mm-hmm. Um and so, and you, how many games this one came with? How many games would you expect for a, a C64 Mini that came out? I expect out for 64 games is what I expect. 64 games. Why they didn't sell this for 64.99? Come on. Yeah, no kidding. What did they sell? Be clever. It for? How much was it? It was 69.99. 69. So, Why didn't yeah. they do that? Why did I'm oh, whatever? I guess you round up, make more money, but <laughs> yeah, right. We're, are we really going to lose five dollars to be clever? Yeah, I don't think so. Kind of annoying. Um, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of cool games on here, though. Do you remember like Summer Games, Winter Games, um, Hysteria, Hunter's Moon, Boulder da- Boulder Dash, rather. Uh, Boulder California Dash. Games, I already mentioned. Let's see. Chips Challenge was awesome. I don't see Hard Hat Mac on here, so that kind of pisses me off. No, I didn't see that uh, there either. But some pretty good games. And if you were a C64 fan, yeah. you're, you're you in could, heaven you with could, this uh, thing. And not only that, you can actually pro- – it's got basic in it. You can actually – it uses the vi- – we haven't talked about this yet either – uh, this one actually uses the Vice emulation, mm-hmm. uh, which is a common C64 open source, uh, and uh, it, it has basic, so you can go in there and you can program your games like you used to do back in the day, um, or you can load up some of these games through a carousel interface, uh, or if you're really old school, you can kick it over into a, a keyboard mode. You can plug a real keyboard into this thing. The keys on this thing do not work. No, so if you was they're just molded plastic. Work. Yeah, they don't do no. anything. Or the they fun, don't do or, anything. or there's notorious function keys. They don't do shit on this. They just are there. Yeah, yeah. Now, they did go back uh, like two years after this or a year after this and did the C64 Maxi, which was basically just a C64 with uh, a full-size keyboard. Uh, with basically the, the inner components of what we're already looking at here. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it and if you need a keyboard, you can use the joystick to use the on-screen keyboard. Yeah, yeah, it's and great. my God, that's infuriating. Yeah, it's... Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, it is infuriating. That's a good way of putting it. It's very infuriating. Yeah. I also hate it's, the joystick, but it's but that's what they had. So yeah. That's you know. what you had, and it made sense because I, they used to sell that joystick similar to that back in the day, and so it, it made sense. And sure. I... This is probably the one I've used the least out of all my minis, though, because oh really, I love the games is, on here. It's it great. is such a complex, um, you know, such a complex ecosystem. The C sixty four, because uh, like these other ones, these other consoles, I could load up my own ROMs, I could hack it and load up other ROMs. With this one, these sixty four games are for the most part uh, don't use much keyboard input, and when they do, you can quickly get around it. For the most part, with the with the joystick, yeah. it can be a little complicated. I played uh, the Winter Games or something. It must have been. I played one of them. It was a lot of fun, uh, and you had to like uh, you do weightlifting. Mm-hmm. I really like that. That's one. summer. That's um, the summer games. I think. I it, I can't remember which one it was, but I I had a lot of fun with that one. But then I hopped onto some other ones, and I was like, oh, this is like 
this is asking me all kinds of questions, and I've got to type in responses, and I've got to use this joystick, and I'm not cool with that. Yeah. So I'm like, okay. Uh, but let's compare uh, also, real quick here. Let's compare the music for the menu on the C64. Oh menu. yeah, this is actually kind of cool music. So here you go on the C64. Enjoy. Whoops. <laughs> Pretty good. Yeah, I, like I, I really like it. I mean, it's no, you know, it's no Nintendo uh, hold music, but it's it's pretty sweet. Pretty good. Pretty good considering. I mean, I'm not, not all of them are going to be knocks out of the park, but I think that one's all right. Right. I, I like it though. I like it a lot. I, I could listen to it for a pretty good while. For I'm like, okay, it's time to load something up. Now, <laughs> huge to get on my nerves. Big hat off here to Brian because he, I, I did not get on the train and get one of these right away, and uh, they yeah. put, they're not available anymore, as far as I know. Uh, you can, you be yeah, not not being distributed through uh, uh, any market that's being manufactured. Yeah. How about that? Yeah, there you go. Yeah. And Brian had an extra one, so he sent me yes. that extra one, and now I have one, and I'm really glad I do because I really like that device quite a bit. I, I like it a lot. It's got two USB ports. You can and uh, it's got uh, it's got that power micro USB on the back, mm -hmm. um, and it's got uh, you know it's got a little power button, and you can plug it into your computer. This is the this is the one exciting thing about the C64 that they got over everybody else, and it's probably because of the licensing stuff. Uh, the C64, you can download the latest firmware for this thing, uh, and it'll allow you to uh, load uh, your your C64 ROMs uh, onto a USB stick and put it right in there. No no mod needed. You just, yeah, you just run them. You just load up your ROMs. They don't give a just, shit. Just yeah, I can play yeah, that you, hard if hat. You own, if you had that, the ROM, that's on, good That's on right. That hard hat Mac game I want to play, no problem. I can right. play it on here. Yeah. Just have to go through the work Not to do it. That's nope. it. All you got to do is put it on a thumb drive, throw it in your uh, your N64, and then figure out how the hell to load it up. Now, we'll, we'll gotta, talk, we'll talk about this kind of device. Yeah, that stuff's hard. If you weren't around during that era, you don't know. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, this was you like, don't know. Yeah, you don't know how easy it was. <laughs> yeah. uh, these days, you know, somebody gives you an image file and says, here, stick this SD card in a thing, and then boom, you're done. Um, yeah. That still, you know, there's still some hacking to be done. And we, when we're done with these kind of the main stuff here, we will talk about the hacking scene around these devices. Yeah. And how that's going. And, and why you'd want to hack it. Because we haven't really, I haven't hit hard on some of the negatives on the NES Classic and Super NES. Yeah. But we will. And we, that's we'll the reason there. why you have to do some hacking. Yeah. And some of the hacking is not stuff. even about making it so you can have extra games. Some of it is just no. quality of life stuff with the console. Quality so of life. Yep. We'll get to that. All right. Let's talk about the, uh, i actually going to switch these around. Let's talk about the Genesis Mini. Well, you know, we'll do them yes. in order. We'll do them in order. Let's do them in, in order. chronological order. PlayStation Classic, aka PS1 Mini, came out in 2018 for $100. Um, what? This is the highest price point, but I would also argue the biggest dud among them. Um, yeah. For many reasons. You wouldn't reasons. have to argue very hard with that. No, I, I, don't, I don't think there are many people out there that would argue with me. Um, it is no. a problematic launch. And anybody who loves, who is ex excited about this, He's either no longer excited uh, or has hacked it to bits or who who knows. But uh, Sony put out a press release and they were like, well, we're getting in on this too. And yeah. everybody was like, oh, sweet. That's great. I love my PlayStation. We're, we're, we're two years late to the game, but uh, here we come. Yep. And that's fine. Who cares about the timing? I, you know, that didn't bother me. What bothered me yeah. is the half-assed translation on all this stuff. It used an older emulator. It was unreliable. The stuff in the games themselves ran poorly, worse than they did on your PS1. Uh, because they just weren't optimized. There's no optimization on this thing. And the selection were, of games put, kind of they sucked. Put, they put PAL and NTSC games on the same device that they were selling in different markets. And so, you know, PAL runs at 50 frames per second. And so it has to, you have, your, the thing has to freaking try to make it run at 60, which is going to make everything seem slow. Yeah. Yeah. Plus the game list just kind of blew. It was 20 games. Here's what you got. Yeah. Battle Arena Toshinden. You know how I feel about that game now. Yeah, we talked about that. That game's not great. <clears throat> Next up, you got Cool Borders 2. <laughs> you got Destruction Derby, Final Fantasy uh, 5, 6, 7, 7, rather. 7's a great game. Yeah. Uh, uh, let's see. What else? Oh, we did not get the Ark the Lad games or Armored Core. Those went to Japan, so that sucks that we didn't get those. You uh, suck. G. Darius and Gradius uh, Gaiden uh, all went to Japan, yeah. not here. Grand Theft Auto 1, but the PAL version of it. Nobody's really playing that. Super shoddy version of that game. It's not good. Yeah. Uh, Intelligent Cube, cool game. Unless you're in PAL. Uh, right. Jump and Flash. Cube. Again, Jump and Flash is on here. Amazing game. Guess what? PAL version. F off. PAL. 
Thanks a lot, Sony. Yeah, thanks. Metal Gear Solid, great game, good version on here, nothing wrong with that. Uh, Mr. Driller, Oddworld, Abe's Odyssey, PAL version for some unknown ungodly reason. Parasite right. Eve, Ridge Racer Type 4, Rayman, Resident Evil Director's Cut, PAL version again. Revelations, Persona, Saga Frontier, Super Puzzle Fighter 2 Turbo, Siphon Filter, Tekken 3, PAL version. Fighting games thanks. should not be ever thanks, in PAL version. PAL! Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six, PAL version. Uh, Twisted Metal, Wild Arms, and Z or XI—I don't know what that was. Some Japan yeah. only thing. Z yeah, yeah, that's that's yeah, that's a popular. Anyway, Japan. it's just mixed. It's not great. Like yeah. not not concluded here, by the way. None of the wipeouts. Those should have absolutely been on here. Wipeout one and two. Yeah. What are you doing? Uh, Mortal Kombat three or two for that matter. Uh, Crash Bandicoot, Spyro the Dragon, Tony Hawk Pro Skater, Tomb Raider, Parappa the Rapper, Gran Turismo. Shall I go on? Symphony of the nope. Night, No you Castlevania. Are you kidding me? Oh my You've lord! It. It's just a. You've nailed it's, it. It's not great. Yeah. Um, that, anyway, yeah, I, how, I'm really how, mad that they missed out. How how hackable is it? Is it hackable? This device? It's actually pretty hackable. Uh, there. Let, let's see what the. I forget what the project name is. So I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Oh, shoot! I should, I meant to pull that in our in our show notes. Anyway, uh, there is a hack for it. It is not the same as the hack G, which you use for the other devices that we're going to talk about. Dig start for the Commodore, which needs no hacking. Yeah. Um, uh, this one uses uh, a, a hack where you uh, you have to. It's, it's so dumb how you have to do it. You have to you have to uh, format a uh, thumb drive and with uh, FAT32. Mm -hmm. Name it Sony. You have then to plug it into the second USB plug port, uh, and then you have to power it on after you've done all your prep work and put your your hack stuff on on the on the USB. And then at that point in time. Uh, you can load it up and it'll automatically back up everything on the machine and then uh, and you have to take it out and then put those files somewhere safe because if you ever need to go back, that's what you're going to have to do. Yeah, uh, lose those. Because so, you can't plug this thing in. Unlike the other consoles, this is a little more powerful. This is a little more, it's got a little more oomph. And so uh, unless you're plugging your micro USB into a powered uh, USB, it's not going to give you power. You're, you're not going to come on. You're going to have to... Uh, you're not going to just be to plug into the you know a non five amp uh, yeah, port. So a, anyway, it requires more power because that thing's got an ARM quad core freaking yeah. thing, one gig of RAM, DDR two three RAM rather, sixteen gig of EM uh, of flash yeah. memory. Like it's this is pretty nice stuff under the hood. It's not bad. Exactly. It's 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 one of the it's one of the B, if it's the one with it's got the most potential. It had the most potential. It was also the most expensive, and it was the most disappointing uh, because of that. But yeah, once you once you once you load the hack in there, uh, then you can bypass uh, the horrible. Uh, they use the open source uh, PSX uh, emulator yeah. for it, but they used a version that was not optimized for this, and so they had a lot of issues. Uh, so if you load up, uh, you know, if you load up Retro Arch or anything like that in here and put some. Core engine. You can play anything. You don't have to play just PlayStation games. This this thing will play all the other systems together. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a real good solution. Like if you're thinking, because this is one of the things I was want to talk about before we get done. Hopefully, uh, the retro pie scene. Retro pies have gotten very scarce and very hard to find because everybody wants retro pie because they're beautiful and wonderful and easy and straightforward. These consoles are one of the few minis that you can find for a reasonable price. Seventy nine ninety nine still because even at seventy nine ninety nine and with everything else being out of the market, people are still like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like there's I, not I even there's not even like some um, artificial right. scarcity or project. It. You just project Eris. That's what it is. Uh, KT Data and Chatroom got it. It's project Eris is the name of the uh, of the the hack the hack stuff the hack stuff that works from the uh, the Sony. Um, but I I actually have a plan for this. I uh, took this thing apart, did some measurements on it, and I kind of wanted to see if I could fit, fit it in a Raspberry uh, Pi 4 case because I can't find any Raspberry Pi 4s for any reasonable price. Yeah. And uh, I've got a nice, sweet case. Yeah. That's what you want. That, uh, it is a, I believe this is the, is this the Famicom version I got, I believe? Yeah. Um, yeah. So. I've got this other little nice little case. I have to I have to link to to this on the um the, some of the show notes and stuff so you guys can see how cool this is if I can get it out. But it's a Raspberry Four case. It looks just like all the other mini stuff. Man, I mean, there's so much. There's a huge argument. You know, you can't you can't argue with people when they say uh, that the Raspberry Pi really could just do all this. It's just a lot of work. 
It's yeah. you know, yeah. I mean, it's not like a ton of work, but it's it's a lot more work it's than just going to pick up. Yeah, it's yeah. not as simple as just grabbing it off the shelf. But I mean, it's got cool stuff like you can you can eject the tray from this thing, and there's slots that you can put uh, SD cards into. You wouldn't like you wouldn't plug them in, but you can store them there. Sure. So I mean, sure, why not? There's all kinds of cool stuff. But I I think the form factor will fit in one of these. Um, so I'm gonna play around with that. But yeah, one uh, one tiny note about the PlayStation. That's the one that I didn't get. Um, the reason I didn't because the reviews are so bad. Yeah. Um, I could looking at it now. I could have one delivered at 7 a.m. tomorrow for with free shipping at 78 bucks. Um, yeah. but I'm still not like I, I want that. Here's what here's what's funny. I want that right. device for one reason and one only. Because it's just a rad little tiny version of it. I don't even want to plug it, it in. Yeah. It it's Okay, so it's, it's Somebody complicated. send me okay. theirs. Look, if you're sick of yours and you're like, man, I don't even yeah. use this, so tell me how much you want for it. Let me know. Let's go something under a new one, and I'll get right. it. I just want to have a tiny PlayStation. That's what I want. The And the hack on this, too, is complicated because you have to keep the uh, USB with the hack plugged in because it basically runs from the USB. Um, and so that takes up one of your controller ports. And there's the you know some of the better games on here are two-player games. Uh, especially if you're wanting to play some of the other systems. Um, so you have to get uh, a little adapter for the back. Unlike uh, a Raspberry Pi, most of those come with Wi-Fi or some kind of network connectivity. These do not. So, But you can get Bluetooth adapters and um, uh, Wi-Fi adapters and all that kind of stuff. And it'll all work with this Project Eris. Um, so it's a good starting point if you can't locate a Raspberry Pi right now. If you're right. like, oh, God, I want to work on a project right now. I want to make my own mini. You could do it with this. You could do it with one of these PlayStation minis. Yeah. Well, I kind of want one. You, you could do it. KT Data in the chat got his for 20 bucks when they were clearing them out. Now I'm annoyed. That's how much I think I paid for mine. I think I paid like 20-something bucks. Because I was, I was super excited. Uh, when I saw the announcement, and then I started reading reviews, and I saw the the game lineup, and I was like, "Ah, eh, that's not me. It's not worth a hundred. And uh, no. I waited. I think I paid like twenty bucks. A lot that's of like paid paying. That's like a, th- a third of a PS5 to pay for if you don't like what games are in it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. why would you do that? Yeah. Well, anyway, I'm gonna have to keep my eyes open for a deal because I, I still yeah. want like I said one right now the it. market like it is. Uh, th- that's about as cheap as you're gonna get for a mini form factor type of system for if you were want to do some sure. kind of retro pie kind of thing now let's talk about the one that i've loved since the day i picked it up and that is the sega genesis mini you're going to hear a little the sega bias best today. mini it's the best mini um the reason it's the best mini is they go full sega with this thing um you heard the commercial earlier that's that's part of it but um yeah. the games it's a really good lineup it's a games list that you would expect to see in a in a ser- in a collection like this um, no weird performance problems. It's right. cute and it's small. It's the original Genesis. So you're looking at that ugly one with the red stripe thing, but it's, you know, very nostalgic yeah. or whatever. The and high definition um, graphics. Yep. It's got the three button controllers, which the thing shipped with. Some people wanted the six button, but I think they held back on that because now we have news of something coming up. We'll get to that in a minute. Yeah. Um, but I think for this one, which is 80 bucks, so it's a little on the, well, I shouldn't say higher end. It's the same as the SNES. Uh, yeah, classic cost. Uh, this was this, and this one also just—I don't know what it is. Something about it feels legitimate and more like a, somebody shrunk. Honey, I shrunk the console. Kind of about it. Right. It's hard to explain, but it's really, really well done. Um, oh, I haven't heard the. You know what? I haven't heard the menu there. The menu music. Let's see. Genesis Mini menu Genesis. music. Genesis. Here, let's play this real quick. <laughs> I haven't actually heard this in a while. Um, whoops, hold on. Yeah. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah. I used to let this run, like, before I would start my streams and stuff. Yeah, this is Genesis as hell, this thing. Yeah. Oh, this is great. Let me skip ahead a little. <laughs> it's so Genesis, dude. It's so Genesis, man. Now, the good it news so- about that device is it is, A, um, still available, I think. Can I still get this? Um, I don't know if they're still making any unless they're making them in Brazil and you have to get to that story one day too. If you ever, you, Oh God, we got to get into the whole Sega and Brazil story one day on play retro. If you don't know about that, yeah. Oh, it's going to be a lot weirdness. of fun talk with that. 
Okay, take it back. Genesis Mini out of stock everywhere, although you can get them for like 200 bucks. But see, these are actually increased in value. <laughs> yeah, they, they have. They did it. Part yeah. of it is the scarcity, and part of it is you can't buy them new anymore, but you are you know, buying through normal channels, but you can ac absolutely do that. In fact, right now, this says, oh, this is someone selling direct. 192.46 for an unopened one. Good Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, and, if yeah, you didn't get your hands on one of those, what you're going to want to make sure you do is not miss the Genesis 2 model, which isn't even officially announced for North America yet. But um, other markets are getting the Mega Drive, which is what we call the Genesis here. They're getting Mega Drive 2, uh, which is the updated Model 2 hmm. of the device. Again, shrunk down. And it will include um, a bunch more games, including some Sega CD games. I am oh in the six button controller. I'm one hundred percent getting this when it happens. I'm oh, getting this. yeah. There's there's no doubt. As soon as this goes on pre order, I'm heading the GameStop app and I'm going to try to load. I'm going to try to get it. Um, so this story started with Sega effing up, and this story is going to end with Sega redeeming themselves. They made some really bad deals uh, with at games. Mm -hmm. um, they were desperate. You know, they they kind of got, had to get out of the console uh, business. Uh, and so this was a this was a chance for them uh, to redeem themselves, and they didn't rush this product. Yeah, they 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 took a look. They were still working all the way up to 2017. They were still working with uh, at games on, and they and at games had just released in 2017 a uh, Sega Genesis HD that had HDMI capabilities that was made by at games. Yeah, um, and of course. That there's it is is people people uh, love hate it but mostly hate it, um, but they they teamed up Sega did they teamed up with M2, who went in and just everything was just meticulously done, including like all the way from the from the from the emulation, uh, which is just uh, just really really good. I won't say flawless, but very good. Uh, and the controller they actually had the original controller designer come back in. And make the controller modern from the original schematics. Oh man, um, that's awesome! And so it's just amazing. And the in the music that you just heard earlier, yeah, I mean, it's just everything was just high quality, super high quality stuff. And so I am so excited to see because I maybe it's desperation, you know, because everybody else, you're like Nintendo, still in the console making biz. Yeah, uh, yeah. Sony's still in the console making biz, and Sony's like. I mean, it's, it's like, it's like, hey, we could do this mm -hmm. in a small form factor and rule the world. That's right. Now, right now, in, I'm showing this the, market. I'm showing the chat room a commercial for the announcement of uh, basically a trailer of the Mega Drive Two, which again, look not, at that, not confirmed here, but I'm have a feeling it's coming. Um, it's some kind of wrestling parody. But here's the yes. deal. Here are the confirmed titles. Are you ready for this? Give me some confirmed, sort of confirmed titles, please. These are not the final list. This is only the ones that are confirmed so far. So there's more coming. This isn't the, the <laughs> look at limit. that mega. He's got he's got a he's got a console yeah, for he's him. Got a Sorry, console video helmet. people. We we'll have to we we'll to come back and look at that later. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty bad. Um, Not video people. Yeah, go go search for it. Anyway, here's what you got: cartridge titles, Bonanza Brothers, Final or Fantasy Zone. Again, these are Japan titles too, so we don't know if any of these are right. coming to the U.S. So call you know Probably confirmed half. confirmed as best as we can confirm. Uh, Magical Teruto Kun, whatever that is, Shining in the Darkness, yes. Thunder Force, Shining. <laughs> so Thunder Force 4, which was Lightning Force Quest for the Dark Star. I don't know what uh, that was. That was called here. I don't know. Uh, Virtual Racing. That's cool. We like that. Yeah. Uh, we got Mansion of Hidden Souls for the C for the CD titles. Pop Full Mail Mail, another Japan title I've never heard of. Shining Force CD, Silphied, and finally Sonic the Hedgehog CD. Mm. Uh, are the are the device are the games con uh, confirmed? So we don't know anything yeah. about um, timing here or what's going to happen or any of that, but I am beyond excited because they they killed it with this first one, in my opinion. They they killed it. and it's the only one. And you, I'll I'll try. I'm showing this to the people in the in the chat and mm -hmm. uh, here on on video. It's the only one that I felt compelled to run to Etsy to get a uh, a an official little not really official. But this really nice little display thing where I can put my Sega Genesis Mini and the controllers and keep my cables all nice and wrapped up in just pristine condition. Because you know why? Because that's the love they put into it. And as a user, I want to show it the same love 
Thank you, Sega and yeah. M2 for yeah. doing something fan freaking tastic. Yeah, look at you with your love. I like it. With the love. And it's just uh, it's injection molded, uh, but you know, that that shiny black that just it just makes this whole thing just really pop. The controller has uh has two spots for the controllers that are kind of uh staggered up yep. uh, like a stadium mm-hmm. for your controllers. And it's just like I paid like twenty four bucks or something off Etsy. There's a whole bunch of people who make these things. Um, I'm sure there's like some plans out there if you would do like injection molding or whatever. Um, that seems like a great I, I really way to like do it, it because right now, if you put that Genesis or even that Super NES up uh, on a table, the right. HDMI cable that it's connected to will, yeah. make, it do, will make it do a permanent <laughs> wheelie. Just does a wheelie you're, the you're whole time. So, you're so right. The the HDMI cables uh, are just too heavy. It's like this. Um, and I, the, the, HDMI cable, the HDMI cable that came with those things were really, uh, they were they were really too short. Uh, mm-hmm. Especially considering how short the, especially on the NES, considering how short the uh, controller cable. Yeah, I don't use to. that at all. I have to use, I use my own no. uh, HDMI or own yeah, reach. Yeah, yeah. right. It's bastards. Heavy duty. Uh, okay, here's. I want to talk about some other mistakes, some missteps. Neo G, Neo Geo Mini. This yeah. was a mistake. Um, yeah. The reason I say it's a mistake is they thought what people want. It goes back to your controller full of games thing that seemed yeah. sensible. Not what people actually want. They want the nostalgia, not just the games. They want the nostalgia factor, yeah. and that does not come in the form of a squat little arcade machine. <laughs> like it's just not the same. This isn't how they played their games back in the day. Yeah, this is I, a shitty way of representing yeah. a mini. They should have done like the home console device, made a small one. You already know how to do it. It came out in twenty. You had a whole two years to learn from Nintendo, Neo Geo, S and K. You could have done this, and they yeah. didn't do it. The controllers are fine. They're they're you know legit controllers, but the the actual uh, device is this stupid handheld thing, and I hate it. Yeah, and that and that's where they fail for me too because it does not look nice on a shelf. All the rest of these look really nice at half scale. Um, this is not half scale of an arcade machine. This is like one sixteenth scale yeah. of a uh, you know of of a of arcade machine, and those joysticks are pointless. The one of the things that's nice about uh, most of these other minis is the console itself is half scale, but the controllers are just like the original controllers. So there's no you know disconnect there. It just makes sense. Oddly enough, at games makes something called uh, their Legend series, and is actually a full size looking uh, you know like like our Atari fight stick that we had that, mm-hmm. that you that I have. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's kind of like a full size top to an arcade. And it's got all the components built in. That's actually been pretty well received, mm-hmm. even though at games is typically they they have more misses. They've had a few okay things. Yeah. They've managed not to f up everything. How about that? Yeah. They've uh, but for the most part, they have some you know eh, eh, questionable ways yeah. quality, especially. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, their, their legend stuff is, it seems to be okay. And actually it was on sale back in March and I missed out on it and I hated that because uh, I think GameStop had them on sale for like $50 for the smaller one. So that was probably a reasonable price for what you could get. Yeah. It's not too bad. Um, another one that we're never going to see, at least I don't think we're going to see it here is that mini turbo graphics 16 slash PC engine from right. NEC home electronics, right? That's not happening here. Yeah. The, the turbo graphics and the PC engine, they're both basically the same thing, just different. Regions, yeah, different region. Uh, it's different like markets. mega. It's like Mega Drive and Genesis. Same yeah. thing. Now the Turbo Graphics 16 sold out immediately. I couldn't get one of those. I wanted one. I missed out on it. I couldn't get it. Uh, but you can still pick up a PC engine for fairly reasonable prices. I consider reasonable right now in the mini market. If you're paying between eighty to one hundred and thirty dollars, that's reasonable for the scarcity and you know the rarity of it. But anything above that, don't. You're no. Yeah. It's bad. Yeah. Probably bad. Uh, not probably yeah. is bad. Is bad. There's other solutions once you get to that that area. You, you know, just it just doesn't make sense. Somebody's milking your wallet, teat, when they do that. Yeah, someone is. Someone is. And, and NES and Nintendo tried to. They were the first to experience this. This is pre pandemic. This was 2016, uh, and we were already getting a huge scarcity uh, market because of uh, of the the potential, the speculation of how well this is going to sell. And people scalping it. So, mm-hmm. I mean, because they knew it was limited and uh, it just right out of the gate, it was just a disaster. Yeah. So this is um, this is one I think I want. Uh, some yeah, I, I really, I hated that I missed another Turbo, TurboGrafx-16 Mini. Um, like I said, the PC engine is still 
uh, accessible at a reasonable price. And I'll probably end up picking up one of them as soon as I see something that, uh, you know, as I, as soon as I see an opportunity, I'll so probably do that. Was Konami, does Konami own something with these guys? Cause they're, they're, their branding all is all over the mini, but not the old turbo graphics. It was NEC. Right. I don't know if they bought NEC. Or they have some connection to them. Um, That's a good question. I'm looking uh, it's designed by Hudson Soft and sold by NEC. Yeah. Hudson, Hudson, Hudson made the chip, which is crazy. The guys yeah. are mostly known for game development. But right. um, let's see. TurboGrafx Mini. Here we go. 2019 Konami announced. Yeah. Konami announced the 2019 Tokyo Game Show, the TurboGrafx Mini 16, dedicated console. So why does so, did, did it get sold to them? I can't find this. That's anyway, an interesting question. I'm with you because yeah, if you go to Konami, it's like Gate. Um, that's where you can read about the PC engine or the Turbo Graphics, and they get the core they graphics. Bought I'm not familiar with that one at they all. They must have bought some rights or something. But I, I'm yeah, surprised they, they didn't turn it into a, a home pachinko machine. Those bastards with all their pachinko. Of course, I'm bullshit. on. I'm on there now, and it says Bandai Namco Entertainment. Okay, that's just everybody who's involved with this. Okay, yeah, but yeah, it, hard it looks to say. Like, yeah, something to do with it. Hard to say. Uh, yeah, the official the, website's on Konami's website, so I'm assuming that they must have uh, must have or always have some kind of. I don't know a lot. That's that's a blind spot for me. Yeah, I don't know a lot uh, about it. Well. 16 in the PC engine. The Amiga A500 Mini uh, came out in April of this I, year. Did you know that? Yeah, I'm I am down with this, and I'm getting kind of nervous because it's not in my budget right now. It's the one of the more expensive ones. It's like 130 at the top of my uh, you know of my purchasing allowance yeah. for these kind of things mm -hmm. and uh they're still in stock but you know are, are these things going to start getting scarce i don't know they're getting pretty decent reviews 140 on amazon i don't think the price is going to go down any um i'm a little bit nervous but i'm kind of excited about that dumbass mouse that comes with it I don't yeah know i want that mouse um it was a <laughs> that thing was very capable device the like the graphics were awesome yes. uh i mean it was a computer and it was mostly in europe but still like I really want one of these. It's not going to happen. Yeah, I, do I don't think I'm going to do it for that. Amount I of money. I am like I've been back and forth this whole week with the with the mini discussion. I'm like, yeah, I'm getting it. I'm like, no, oh, yeah, no, I'm not. I don't need another. What am I going to do? Am I really going to play with it? And I'm like, oh, but probably I really not. Want it? Yeah, I want it, but I'm probably not going to play. Yeah, it. I don't have no. I don't. I think the problem is I don't have any nostalgia. Like the Genesis is no question. I was like, yeah, Psh. they I, they they could have said 130, and I would said, yes, yeah, fine. Yeah. Charge me. Yeah. Let's go. Charge me. Let's do it. That's because that's where we live, man. We live with that. Yeah, that's that where Genesis I live. was part of our blood growing up. Yeah. Like that thing was a, an amazing device. I love the master system before it. I love the fight with Nintendo. I love yeah. Nintendo, but I love that fight, man. That fight was great. And uh, yeah. except people And it feels like dicks. it's happening all again, except this time, I think Nintendo's going to get, I mean, uh, I think Sega's going to get the final blow on the minis because uh, it's going to be really hard. At this point, to do any do the next level, you can't, N64 gets even more complicated. The Super NES was hard enough to make as a mini because uh, I don't know if you remember they started using coprocessors mm -hmm. uh, in in the Super NES, uh, and those usually comes in the carts and stuff. So you had a lot of different potentials for coprocessors, and yeah. you had to consider you had to make that you had to take the consideration when you're doing the uh, uh, the emulation, the mappers. And so it gets a lot more complicated. It gets even more complicated when you get to the N64 level. And so I, you know, I don't know. I can't see that happening soon, if ever. Yeah. And you know, Sega Genesis is like, hey, hey, hey how about a part two? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, you're right. I want. Um, I kind of want this Amiga. I'm not gonna lie. I really want it. You. I'm telling you, if you end up ordering this. You're dragging me with you. Am because I pulling you if over you the If you end up edge? getting this, okay. I'm going to have to get it. <laughs> There's just no way I can deal with you saying, Oh, yeah, I'm going to take my Amiga 5, 8500. Like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's still available. And they're making plenty of them. I'm a little I surprised. Know. I'm a little surprised well, Nintendo and, yeah. and Sega haven't kept up stock with their stuff. It seems like they would still be making tons of money. I don't know why they're not doing that. Yeah. And I've, I've heard people say that the all this is a fad. The minis are a fad. And I thought a lot about this because it didn't feel right. My intuition said, that doesn't seem right. I don't think this is a fad. I consider this the next logical progression of each of these systems. Yeah. Like all the way back to NES, every time you would be midway through the lifespan of a system, 
you would re, you know, you 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 run out of your first stock. You have to, you, you might as well redesign it and get a marketing boost mm-hmm. by going, oh, now we got the slim, yep. you know, and it, it does this and it's a little bit, you know, more modern looking. You know, we made it a little more more compact, and this is like what happens to consoles twenty years after, uh, you know, everything leaves after mm-hmm. the original launch. Twenty years later, mm-hmm. suddenly you get to these these many things, mm-hmm. and I think this is about as small as you can make something that would give you the nostalgic feels and it's about the smallest form factor you're going to get. Like, yeah. I don't like want to go any smaller. About. Like as much as yeah. it seems cool to have a, you know, you could put all of this computing power into something this big. It would be the size of a playing yeah. card. Yeah. I, I think that's maybe too much. And not that I wouldn't want yeah. one of those on a shelf. That sounds kind of rad. I like little tiny things. I like big things and tiny things. I like little, yeah. little replicas and great big versions of like big pencils and phones and yeah. stuff. I don't know why I like that. <laughs> but, but I think I that's do. why I don't like the arcade scale downs that are like one sixteenth the size mm, yeah. that's too small for me half size that's pretty cool if you can yeah. half size something for me i'm pretty good i don't even know if i win quarter size i know don't give me a quarter don't no. give me don't don't launch the micro nes next year i'm not gonna buy no it. but if you're gonna oh, sell my kid i'm gonna buy the micro nes well here's what i would buy <laughs> they build me yeah. uh when they go get to a gba classic and i think they will oh yeah yeah, they're gonna have to. That that's it, a possibility. Do it that's in the, the right S. Do it in the tech. SP format. Don't do it in the old wide format. Do it in the SP format. Yeah. So it, yeah. it's a clamshell. It opens up. It's got a hundred games on there. You got me, Nintendo. I'll buy the. Oh, there in a heartbeat. You know, you know for sure that Sega is already planning the Game Gear because all that technology is pretty much the same. So I mean, you yeah, know but the Game Gear is such an ugly piece of shit and batter you know like i know the batteries would be better because i we're think a, it looks really good oh i hate I it because you know like why it. you know why here's why you got a postage stamp screen in the middle and <laughs> this gigantic plastic nightmare housing around it with these huge grips. you need Ugh. you need to see you need to see what brazil has done with sega mm. you need to see what tech toy we I need a whole I, I need you to hold my hand and we will one day get to travel down the road that is the Brazilian uh tech uh tech toy story about the Sega Genesis and how they still to this day or at least as recently as 2020 I think uh make the Sega Master System. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No carts. Oh yeah, no, they're so, huge down there not, on that. They stuff. mark they they still make them because of all the import laws and stuff they have. Uh, it's hard for outside businesses to get in there. And so Sega has managed to hold this market by, via tech toy. Uh, and it's just it's an incredible idea. But there's this giant, you know how we had the giant magnifying screen for the uh, Game Boys? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They have one for the, they have one for the game here. <laughs> of course huge they box do. Of course it. they it's freaking amazing. do. It's amazing. It sounds it terrible. It looks cool as shit. All right, listen to what they say here. This is what they. This is a thing I found. Around the same time yeah. the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One launched in 2013, it was revealed that Sony's console had an insane price point in the Brazilian market. Uh, you're going to pay 400 for it here, down there, the equivalent of $1,899 US. That's pretty high. Yeah. Uh, it says it's not good for gamers, not good for the PlayStation brand, Sony admitted. Um, but anyway, high taxes, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Tech Toy, meanwhile, was able, uh, doesn't have this problem because it produces the systems locally, meaning that you can get a master system with 132 built-in games for around 50 bucks U.S. money in a Walmart. Uh, yeah. That is a steal compared to that. So it's yeah. mostly economic reasons that have forced them into this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Import export. They've. But they've, I love it. I love they've it. managed to since Sega has turned over the manufacturing to Tech Toy. Sega took a real cheap shortcut to bypass all of the import stuff, right? And so they're on the inside doing this. Microsoft does the same thing. Microsoft is the biggest in Brazil yeah. because they have facilities there that actually, you know, make the machines. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. it's, it's a crazy. We may have a whole. We may have to do a whole episode. Oh, Brazil is such a weird, isolated. It's like what the fifth most populous country in the world. Yep. And it's got its own gaming ecosystem that yeah. totally bucks the <laughs> trend of the rest of the world i love it it's, it's a trip yeah we'll talk about it in more yep. detail um real quick here if we jumped forward which here's what i would like to see be a mini next okay right because we are kind of done we've we got all the minis out there f- for the most part for this era that we're talking about these the 8-bit through 16-bit era i don't care that i say this but maybe i would if i got it but I don't think I care about an N64 Mini. Yeah. Um, I do think a GameCube Mini 
and a I, uh, oh my god can you imagine a little gamecube like on like si- oh yeah. sitting on the it's side like big. and rotating around or something just a little guy this big <laughs> like the logo yeah <laughs> i just want this little guy this big that's what i yeah. want with a little handle on the back that's what i want and then yeah. I want a uh, I want a uh, I want a Saturn Mini and I want a Dreamcast Mini. I, That's what I want. I think a Dreamcast and a Saturn makes really good sense. Um, it, it, aesthetically, I think. What if they could do a Dreamcast good. Mini, but it had a ton of Genesis or sorry, a ton of Saturn games on it? How about that? Yeah, yeah. And I think yeah, I think that may be at some point they may just go that route because there's going to be a point. It's going to be like okay. Are we really making that much money on the actual consoles themselves, or you know, are we are repackaging the games? Where, where are we making the money at? Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's a really good question. It, I, it's it's got a it's it's. I don't think minis are anywhere. To, I don't think they're going anywhere. I I think I don't think this is like a a fad. I'm not saying that it won't fall in and out of favor a little bit, but I don't think uh, it'll I think depend we're out see on it for timing. A while. But I think you're right. I think we'll. I think yeah. the trend will continue because I think they tapped into it. Like Nintendo with the NES yeah. Classic went. Well, what if this looked like an NES, but it was just tiny, and everyone lost their shit, and they went, yeah, "Oh, yeah. oh, that's what people want." Okay, <laughs> then now you open up this swath of potential money, and there's almost yeah. no console you could mention to me right now that if you told me I could get it in a little tiny format with a bunch of games on it, I wouldn't get excited. Yeah. I yeah. get excited. I mean, let's look. the The real honest truth of it is, even though we really took a real close look at mini consoles. Uh, starting with the 2016 NES, which has been six years now, yep. all this really started and never stopped since the early 2000s yeah. when we had the handheld, when we had the controllers uh, that that plugged into your component. So I mean, or your composite, whatever. Uh, and so I mean, it's yeah, it's it's been a little bit, and I think it's proved it, it, that it you know the idea has merit. Yeah, I, I not only that, but if, it has... if the supply chain doesn't kill all of it off, yeah. Uh, just, just well, that's a good point. Like right now, things are right. with supply chain. It still hasn't caught up to itself, and I don't know when that's going to happen. But um, yeah, yeah, and there's probably I'll a wait, lot. Of we'll little... wake up one day and be very excited. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> you're going to just wake up on a Wednesday and they're going to go. All right, we're good. We're good now. All the silicon Dude. you can eat, it's available now. Start. There you go. Uh, all we right. didn't even well, get into the hacking, but I, uh, if you have hacking questions on how to hack any of these things, I'll, I'll try to write up a little short, uh, a little short thing. Uh, how to simplify some of the stuff that I experienced and did. Maybe I'll even do a video. I don't know. You should do it. I'll, I'll should try do to it. sum it up. All right. Well, let's watch up. for that. Uh, we got uh, plenty more uh, that you can do with your minis. But right now, this. Destroy it. <laughs> All right. We like to play a game called Guess My Game every week where we play audio from an old game, try to guess what it is. Very few uh, hints to get us there. And uh, I'm going to start with me this week. Brian, I'm going to play a, a thing. And uh, it came from 1995. No. Oh. But think console, but don't discount arcade. Don't discount arcade, but think console. Okay, I am now primed and ready. Here is, okay, those are your hints. Here you go. Some menu shit. Some menu shit. Oh, that should be a giveaway (laughs) right there. Did you hear that? Oh, no, I missed it. Hold on. Do it again. Right there, that should be should be a hint. Let's see if the chat gets it. It's not chop liquor chat. Oh, wait. Some kind of fighting game. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's Ninety-five. Oh, that would man. be like about the time I got my. Yeah, what'd you get? Does it sound like? What's this different screen? It's not like a virtual fighter, is it? It's... Hey, wait, I'm sorry. What'd you say? It's not like. It's, a it's not like a virtual fighter, is oh, it? Oh, guess what? It is literally virtual fighter. You're at okay, the okay. Ready, go. Oh round yeah, two. I hear it now. Yeah, hundred percent. And that even sounds like that even sounds like carry over to, into the Dreamcast era too. Look at listen to that. Boy, yeah, it's so, it's, uh, so this that is specifically stuff. the 1995 release of the Sega 32X version of the game. Ah, that's why I didn't fa- sound exactly familiar. It's not a hundred percent arcade one to one on sound, but visually, right. pretty much nails it. Um, and control stuff like it's pretty much the arcade machine, uh, and I loved it. I played the hell out of it. Yeah, I wore that cart down. 
Uh, I wore it down, it. baby. I did. I really, really liked Virtual Fighter on that console. Uh, really so there's mine. Hey, Brian, I'm going to play yours here. What's what's my year that I'm playing uh, this This from? is 1992, and I want to thank Dustin. He's the one who sent me, we talked about this earlier, that, PH, that PS2 fat. Uh, he sent me that, and he also sent me this stumper right along with it from 1992. So All right. give a listen. Here it is. <laughs> Two, you say? Yes, nineteen ninety of two. Console? Uh, I yes, it is. It's a uh, console game, and now I'm starting to question my sanity. Oh yeah, go ahead. <laughs> you always do this every week. Brian's not yeah, sure. Yeah. What file he's giving me? Right. So I want to. I, uh, was this the Game Gear version of this? I don't know. I got the audio from. I. It's a Sega game. Okay, Sega game. There's my hand. Um, I don't freaking know. Uh, give me another hint. How about a How about a Warner Brothers property? How about that? Um, some Donald Duck shit. Oh, is it Darkwing Duck? Warner, Warner Brothers? Come on, I said Warner Brothers. I didn't say Disney. Oh. Listen to the words I'm saying. Yeah, I said what I say. I thought I said Daffy you Duck. Said, yeah, you, I thought you said Donald Duck. Oh, it's maybe the, I said uh, Donald Duck. I didn't oh, you know what? I'm wrong. I'm wrong. <laughs> Dustin sent me the SDS version, which is the audio you are listening to is the SDS version. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so. I was wrong. I was thinking of the Sega Genesis, and that was a different one. Is this DuckTales? So, DuckTales? N- no. D- uh, Darkwing no. Duck? No. Uh, d- uh, it's Tasmania. Tasmania. <laughs> 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 I never played Tasmania. Was it good? That was great. Was it a good game? Uh, it, yeah, I, I watched the video. Uh, Dustin seemed to think it was a pretty good game and that uh, it might be uh, hard for you to guess, so that's good. He's right. I had no idea what that freaking was. Not even the music's familiar. I, I guess I've never played it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Was there a cartoon it, it coincided with that wasn't the shorts? Like uh, uh, the Tasmanian it was Devil? The shorts. Okay. Right. Because he didn't have his own series in the '90s or something. Uh, I don't. Not independently. I don't think. Okay, no. that sounds right to me. By the way, I captured these out as well. Here we go. Yahoo! That's uh, that's what's her name winning in <laughs> in uh, st- or in Virtual Fighter. Yahoo! Yeah. Yahoo! And then you got this guy. Ready? Go! Oh yeah. I always sound like it he's in published- the shitter. Right. It's like hey, uh, the Taz. I- yeah. Go ahead. What are you say? Tasmania was published by Sunsoft and is a different game than the ones published by the Sega Genesis, Sega Game Gear, and Nintendo Game Boy. That's what was confusing me. Uh, I was like, gotcha. that doesn't like the Tasmania. I remember. Yeah. And that that's that's right. We need the guy calling our fight to be in the bathroom when he does it. Ready, go. Yep, just needs to be in the <laughs> stall. All right. <laughs> he's just like he's in a stall. <laughs> well done. Here's this. Welcome to the treasure room. do some emails uh one of them in fact this is play retro show at gmail.com is the email address to use uh sent to this email or sending us email this week is steve who steve. says this he says hello dudes um i wish i could have chimed in for last week's episode as i have a fave to contribute pac-man ce or championship edition for the uh, nes oh yeah you heard me NES? he says was a d make of the original championship edition that came out for the 360 it's not, or sorry, it's a great port, and the music is awesome. Uh, in fact, the music is probably the most notable thing about the game, considering it's original hardware. Anyway, thanks, uh, or sorry, here, here, links to the gameplay, 39 second mark is where the magic begins. So I'm going to play this. Um, I didn't know this existed. This is news I to me. I didn't either. This looks good. Yeah. News to me that this is even a thing. Um, let's put this in here. So they, somebody figured out a way to say, hey, what if it's like championship edition gameplay, but let's do it on a NES. Oh, this music is good. This is good. By Namcot. Namcot. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. So, so somebody totally homebrewed this, right? I guess. Oh, it looks so. Oh, and it's got the it's got the number. It's got the numbers after the dots too. When you eat them. Yeah. Oh, I like this. Yeah. Look at this. It's just. Oh, and it scrolls. Well, this is such a clean-looking game. I really like this. Was it 2008? They said. Yeah. Well, that would have been the, that would have been Championship Edition came out. Right. Yeah, there's no reason you couldn't do the gameplay of that game on this old hardware. Oh, look at this flashing guy! I love it. It's this music. 
I'm uh, I'm having some kind of seizure, but I love it. Oh, it's beautiful. Uh, you know what? I kind of want to play this. I'm gonna track it down, see if I can get get my hands on the ROM or something. I've been playing the hell out of this, so oh, and yeah. it even moves as fast as it needs to move. I'm impressed. Yeah, on the old hardware even. Crazy. That's nuts. Okay, well you've convinced me. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Steve. Steve, you're the best, Steve. You're of all the Steves, you're my favorite, Steve. Yeah, you're the yeah. I love that. You ever heard that uh, "I Am Steve" song? No. Is there an "I Am Steve" oh, song? God. How's it go? "I Am Steve." That is the best. "I Am Steve." There are very many Steves, <laughs> and what? I am really? one of these. Yeah, this it's is a, great a real song. thing. I've never heard of this. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's a song by Hey Steve, and it's called "I Am Steve," and wow. it's probably like yeah. So I wouldn't doubt if if it would have some kind of. Uh, abilities to do some. There's an acoustic version on uh, YouTube. Maybe we can get a hit for that one. No, yeah, maybe. <laughs> you never know. X Chicken. Well, I'm too X Chicken to check it out, but uh, maybe you will at home. Uh, send us those emails. Again, playretroshow at gmail.com. Big thanks to Steve and everybody else who sends us emails. We really, really appreciate it. Our next discussion is going to be all about, we mentioned it earlier, we mentioned it again, the Dreamcast. The final yes. nail in both Sega's coffin and I think Jewel in their crown, because it was a hell of a console, and I loved it. But it was a little bit too late, in some ways too early, yeah. uh, for what that thing was laying down. But it's time it gets the spotlight, and we're going to talk about it here. It also kind of represents the upper ceiling of what we cover on this show, in terms of retro right. gaming. And it's funny, because you know I don't look at the PS2 and say, ooh, we should cover the PS2, but it's technically the same era. So yeah, I, I don't yeah. know why Sega gets a pass because this thing, unfortunately, was a flop compared to its competition. Yeah, it, uh, it, it, it deserves the, so much. The PS2 more. games I remember the most are the later PS2 games, and the Dreamcast games most I remember are the early Dreamcast games because there wasn't many legs at, yeah. at a certain point. Yeah, like, and okay. and keep in mind, you know, as someone had mentioned in the chat, and this is true, technically. This is the first console Microsoft had their hands in because it ran Microsoft CE was the underlying That's right. tech. Yeah. And you uh, know what Windows else? CE. Suck it, PlayStation. Uh, if you had a Dreamcast, you may have owned the Bleemcast. Do you remember that little yeah, CD I, I allows you to it. play PlayStation games on the mm -hmm. Dreamcast? I do remember the Bleemcast thing. Suck yep. it. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the lasting legacy that was the Dreamcast, some of its best titles, and... Um, I don't know, maybe some of the chances of it becoming a, a true mini. We'll, we'll dig into that a little bit deeper. And what yeah. games we would include in there. So, yeah, Sega Dreamcast. The storied demise of Sega and rebirth in a lot of ways. Sega's doing a lot of cool stuff now with publishing. And, you know, they got a big big handle on a lot of PC games these days. And they got a brand new Sonic game coming out. Like, they got stuff to do. They're doing it. Yeah. And, and they're they're doing, look at that movie. Look at that Sonic movie. It did great. Did real good. First, both of them did. They both did great. Yeah. So, uh, you know, Sega got they got they got a they got a little bit of breath left in them. You know. Yeah. Brazil Brazil can't be all wrong. No. Brazil can be more right than wrong. That's what I say. Uh, all right, Brian. We're uh, gonna get out of here. Before we do, though, I want to welcome any new patrons we've had since last week. Patreon.com dot com slash play retro. That's Patreon.com slash play retro. Great place to go. Sign up and get additional benefits for supporting your favorite show, throw us a couple of bucks, man. That's all we're asking. So we can keep making this stuff. How are we supposed to stuff. afford these minis? Right. How am I supposed to run out and get that freaking uh, that C500 mini? I need the, right. I need the keep, cash. Keep us from being... Look, you have no idea how many times I've been like, hey, what if I just contacted these people and see if they would send me a review copy? And I'm like, no, I don't want to do that. I don't want our show to be a review show where we we shrill, you know, for, we, we, we take... Like that kind of stuff, and and then give it a review. I don't want to do that. Yeah, boo. Me neither. Me neither. Uh, but we'd love to have uh, your support. The, just because you like the show, that's the main reason that we're asking for it. Yeah. And if you do, great. If not, keep listening. Keep getting it the way you get it. It's fine. We're here for you. But uh, for those of you who can, we'd love it if you could. patreoncom slash retro Playretroshow at gmail.com is once again our email address. Playretroshow on Twitter and frogpants.com slash playretro will get you everything else you could ever ask for. Hey, Brian, anything else to add before we go today? Oh, yeah. Make sure you tune in nightly, usually 6 p.m. Eastern time. I am usually playing these games, and I will be doing some Dreamcast emulation this week and then dreaming and hitting Facebook Marketplace going, I wonder if there's somebody nearby who has a Dreamcast I can pick up, spend some of this Patreon money on. I'll probably do all of that this week. Oh, very nice. Uh, 
<laughs> Don't that, be surprised. If you want to know where I am, I'm busy building a castle in V Rising. That game's got me so hooked I can barely stand it. It's so good. It's so good. I don't know what that is. It's a really good... It's a modern game, though. See, you don't do those anymore. You don't play modern games. You play... What is modern? What is modern? What is modern? Baby. That doesn't make any sense. Why was I can saying I, that? Can I, can I play it on my <laughs> Sega Genesis Mini? No. <laughs> no, you then can't. Then forget it. Then forget it. Right. Exactly. No <laughs> sale for Brian. <laughs> anyway, that'll do it for us. Thank you all for listening. Play something retro. We'll see you next week. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Yes. Get more at frogpants.com. Now you're playing with power. That's about all that commercial for the Super Nintendo Mini. Love.